Hey gang, my name is Carl White and you are listening to the Scotsman Guide podcast where we do a spotlight, go a deep dive on the authors. And uh, we have one of the great authors on the commercial side, uh, Michael Lashinsky, uh, wrote a great article uh, that was entitled uh, The Digital Branding Experience. And it was uh, a commercial mortgage brokers must use online tools to develop their uh, business image. So, uh, Michael, great to have you on today and uh, looking forward to hearing more about this. Yeah, thanks for having me, Carl. Cool. So, uh, Give us a little bit of background of, of who you are. So, uh, so you're you're are you a, a commercial lend, lend, uh, mortgage broker yourself? Are you in the commercial side of it? Yeah, I mean, we do a lot more than just uh, broker debt. We, we uh, work with a lot of developers um, and entrepreneurs that want us to underwrite deals. Um, you know, create pro formas, look at the capital stack and then help raise the capital. And um, often, you know, that's debt. It's always debt and equity and government incentives. We do a lot with tax credits too. But yeah, we're, we were raising a lot of debt and equity. All right, cool. And so in the article where it's, you know, you're talking about the digital branding experience, let's talk about that for a little bit. So on the digital branding experience, like, like, can, like, like you, tell me, like, what's the, is this something I really that's really important? You know, we hear branding this and branding that. Is that something like like explain the importance of branding for a mortgage broker uh, in today's competitive market? Yeah, well, I think you nailed it when you said competitive market. You know, if you really want to differentiate yourself, I, I think it's having a brand and then doing good work um, for the people that are coming to you for debt, and then letting them kind of um share that brand with their network and then hopefully that repeats but I, I think you really have to um have something that people can share or, or else it's you know your growth is limited yeah so so on the um like like is is, is this branding more for my client to remember or my prospect or my past database or my referral source uh, to remember me? Or is this more of like a search engine optimization uh, type thing we're finding, uh, you know, prospecting through online search engine optimization? Yeah, I mean, it's both are important. Like, I don't know why you, you wouldn't uh, consider both. I don't know if branding... Um, especially to be remembered and then for someone to like share your reference, um, you know, the brand is so much easier to be remembered than, you know, just saying, oh, what's that guy again in New England yeah. that I talked mm -hmm. to? Um, but yeah, when it's FCO, you know, if you have key phrases and, and you can attach, you know, your brand to that, um, you know, you're going to come up in, in more traffic than you would otherwise. Yeah. So, and on, on doing this branding, like you mentioned in the article about um, uh, like uh, content marketing and social media uh, for a mortgage broker, like what, what are the benefits of, of doing the content marketing in it? And is social, it's really two separate questions. So question one, what's the benefits of content marketing? And how does that play with online? And then part two, which I, I'll remind you of, um, social media for a mortgage broker. It is it is it worth is it worth uh, worth the time? Yeah. Um, well, to answer your first question, um, gosh, you know, again, talking about differentiating yourself or kind of standing out from the pack. Um, if you really want to be found and it's not a referral you got to create content and and then that's the more content you have um the easier you're going to come up in search um and and it gives you credibility as well so you know if you really want to stick up in the pack yeah i, I you got to do content and then your second question was around social media and yeah is, is it that like important? So yeah, you know, what what's the benefits of doing the social media? Like, 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 is that something that really? I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm I'm just asking. Like, is is that something? 
I always try to think of what our listeners might have in their head. And and you're always going to have the skeptics. I, I don't need to do that. Is, is is social media worth the effort of, of doing it? Like, am I going to get measurable results from it? Yeah, I, I, I do think so. And I think you get the, there's a different channels of social media today. There's so many different uh, outlets. And then, you know, what I like to do is A-B testing, you know, maybe test one social media channel and, and see what kind of ROI you're getting. And if you're not getting the kind of traffic you were hoping, switch to another one. But I think across industries, um, social media is, that's where, where everything is at today. I don't even know what the average amount of consumption is um, per day from the average consumer. But uh, if you want to get eyeballs, um, that's where you go. And, and I think it's across all industries, not just um, debt instruments and commercial mortgage brokers. But, yeah, it, it, you got to. Yeah. You know, I was, I was thinking the other day, it, you know, I don't know, gosh, not that long ago, 20 years ago. Like, to, I, I don't think, I, I think it's never been easier for, the let's call I'm using air quotes here. The average person to have the same or have the appearance of the same online presence as say Ford Motor Company, you know per se. And and I think for the first time ever, you know, I can advertise right beside Ford or Motor Company on on just Facebook or which, you know whichever platform. And uh, boy, I, I think that uh, that's that's I think that's a shockingly easy thing to do. Is, is there, you mentioned about the different platforms. Does one kind of stand out above the other for you? And, and again, it's not that we have to choose one above the other, but if I start with one, which one would, would you recommend I start with first? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. And again, I, I go back to AB testing. And, and I got to say, Carl, like we did some um, on Facebook and we got some good deals in um, Titusville, Florida, that I, I didn't even know was a place because I live in Metro West Boston. And it was, it was a very good sized deal. And then we started getting interest from even um, like Missouri. And, and we had one guy that was outside the United States representing different deals in the States. I never would have met them. And, and that was on Facebook. Um, and then same thing, we, we went to LinkedIn. And, and we picked up some new work that we never would have gotten. Um, and I never tried like, TikTok or Twitter. Um, well, that's not true. I've done some work on Twitter, but it's been a while. But I've never done anything on TikTok. But some of my friends in different industries say that's where they're putting their money right now is in TikTok. So I think, you know, you do some testing. Try one channel, see what kind of returns you're getting try another, try another, maybe go back to the first or second, if, if whatever one was giving you the best results. How about, uh, we talked a little bit about social media. How about uh, blogging? What, what, are the, uh, what are the benefits of, of blogging for a, 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 a commercial mortgage broker's branding strategy? Yeah, well, it kind of goes back, I think, a little bit to the content marketing. I, I think at the very least, it gives you credibility you know, and then if someone's searching and your blog comes up and they read through it and, and they like what you had to say, um, you just picked up someone that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise picked up. And then that person usually um, refers people in their network and that network so refers. So picking up one person could result in 10, 20, you know, or more. You know, it's almost endless at, at a certain point. Um, so the more you can get out there, the, you know, the better. I, I don't see downside. Yeah. Yeah. I I remember one of my early mentors told me, uh, there's nothing better for business than closings. And, 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 uh, and, you know, obviously, you know, you get the money from that, but what he meant was exactly what you're saying here is you get one deal and then you meet somebody through there and you meet somebody through there. And, you know, our definition of a successful transaction is we get a referral from that trend, not just a closing, but a referral from it. So uh, uh, on, on the blocking, is there a, like, how often is it, do you recommend somebody do that? How much, how much effort and energy do I need to put toward that? 
That's a good question. Um, you know, I honestly, I think it everything changed with the AI tools that have been coming out. Um, as I know, some of my friends are in private equity. Um, some of their portfolio companies, they're writing blogs like every second, third day because they're not even writing them anymore. I mean, they're having chat GDP or whatever it's called, um, doing most of the writing or, or Jasper or some of these other AI tools. So, I mean, two months ago, I would have said one a week. Today, a couple times a week, more, you know. And the more advanced these tools are getting, maybe the more often. Um, so I, I think the world changed with some of these AI tools that have been coming out. Um, I would even go a little bit further. Maybe when we get inundated with all these additional posts, maybe, maybe we have to even think of what's the next avenue. Mm. Um, I haven't even really thought that through until – you know, now as we talk about it, if Edward's putting something out t- three times a week, then and then it almost becomes, um, you know, uh, just like spam. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's funny you say that. I, I was I was thinking the exact same thing. It's like where, what is a finish? Not, not there's never a finish line, but what where what does the next chapter of this look like? Because I remember when, you know, for for my own personal mortgage practice. Um, you know, when email first came out, I'm old enough to remember that, that, uh, man, that was a game changer. And then now it's, everybody gets all the email. I'm not saying it's not an effective strategy, but it's certainly, uh, it, it, there's a, a lot of noise in there. And that suddenly snail mail became like a new great thing. And, and snail mail for the longest time was just not a good source because everybody was doing it until the email and they stopped snail mailing and then they started emailing and then snail mail became a good snail mail actually works for us really well these days. And so it's it's funny how uh, how these things switch. Um, hey, so um, you talk you also talked about the uh, having a, a unique selling point uh, in with your uh, with our offers, with our with our branding. Uh, can you give us some examples of, of what unique selling uh, points you know, that a, a mortgage broker, uh, uh, whether commercial or residential, I don't know if it's, maybe it's different, maybe it's the same, maybe you can comment on that. Like, what's some examples that, that somebody might use to leverage? Yeah, that's an excellent question. There's, at certain times, it can get commoditized, right? Um, so I, I think going back to differentiation, whatever you can do um, to differentiate yourself from your competitors, if it's like um, uh, a guaranteed quicker response or, um, you know, certain kind of uh, communication that can be delivered in a, a different, more effective way based on the client's needs or, you know, and I don't want to say it's a race to the bottom, uh, Mm-hmm. But if you can differentiate yourself in, in the pricing structure or some sort, something to, to just not be like everyone else, I, I think um, adds value and, and kind of um, separates you from everyone. Yeah. So, so when I look at this branding thing, I just just uh, just last night we watched that uh, special or not special a movie I think it was called Air where it talked about the story of Michael Jordan and Nike which is probably one of the most iconic branding stories of of all time and and I look at that and then uh, reading your excellent article you know it, it at first glance I think about branding I go my God I'm competing with Nike and Ford McDonald's and you know insert in everybody else that's, that we can list it and list them off. And it seems like a bit of a daunting path, a, a path. What advice would you give a mortgage banker who maybe finds the the branding process? Maybe they've never put effort toward it because it seems like, uh, like a, gosh, where do I start? Where does, where does, what, what advice would you give that person? Like, where do you start? I guess um, think about your audience and then, um, 
I don't know. Um, and if you can, you know, find a certain niche that's like within your market, um, you know, and then think about what kind of um, brand w- would fit that niche. You know, is it uh, a very like ornate or is it like something bubbly and friendly? Like, what do you want to be um, perceived at and, and kind of work that way? Um, and then, you know, even with the language, the content, or the content and your coloring, I, I think they'll all come um, based on you know your audience and what you want your your market to be. I got a question for you. So you're you're actually a, a you're you're in the mortgage business yourself, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, had like let's say your last ten deals. What 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 how, how'd you bring those in? Like what? What commonalities, like what's working for you personally right now? Yeah, um, we get a lot of our deals from word of mouth and referrals, you know. Um, so again, you know, I'm not the direct lender, but, you know, I'm the broker and yep. some of our direct lenders will refer um, people to us to prepare them for their loan or someone that... Um, what's it called it successfully got a loan from us will refer their friends but i also got to say if someone like maybe heard of us they go to our website too and they read any material that we put out there um i think that it gives people more comfort when they read um you know content uh, about us and it, it makes them feel comfortable that um they're in good hands. The ones. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, it, you know, I, I think sometimes, you know, maybe the marketing advertising can be just supportive, but that support from a referral could be the difference. So do you, do you, so do you think the like, do you think this, uh, that the branding uh, and the, the blogging and the online presence uh, is, is it more for, for like you personally, do you find it more of a validation thing? Like somebody's already think, huh, let me, I'm, I'm thinking about doing business with this person referred. Let me, let me just go, you know, see what this guy's about. Do you think, do you get more from validation rather than, you know, somebody going on there and, and doing a first search and your just name or your company pops up? Is it more of a validation or more of a making first contact on a search type thing that it, for, that it works for you? Not, not that both can't be the place, but which do you find works for you best? Yeah, I, I think it's the first. I think it's more of a validation, but I, but it is both too. I mean, we do get like someone that just said, "I found you on the web," or, or we even had walk-ins, which surprised me. Um, you know, we're like, "Oh, we, we saw your address, and I live local." Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'll tell you personally, if someone said. Um, I don't know, let's say I wanted to find a good construction company and someone referred X, Y, Z and they didn't have a website. Like, I don't know if I would go with them. I'm like, how, um, I don't say professional, but how developed are they as a company that they don't even have like a website or if their website's pretty like, you know, uh, or doesn't have much content or, or they don't have much out there versus someone that does. You know, I would feel that much more comfortable. I'd walk in knowing that they're pretty much going to be the company I'm going with before even meeting them in person. You know, it's funny uh, I, as you're sitting here talking about that. It it made me think, like, like you. So you live in Boston, right? And uh, and even if even if you were a longtime friend of mine that I've known for 20 years, because this happens sometimes, and I say, "Hey, Michael, I'm thinking about coming up to Boston. What's what's a What's a good place for uh, lobster, right? And you say, "Oh, dude, Carl, you got to go to the Lobster Shack." Like, even if I've known you for twenty years, you're you're a good buddy of mine. We go on trips, and I know you real well. I know your your wife or your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever, right? And so, so we know each other. The first thing I'm going to do as soon as you say go check out the Lobster Shack is what I'm going to go online. Strangest yeah. thing ever. I'm going to go yeah. online and look at reviews from strangers that I don't know. 
to yeah. validate what you yeah. just told me. Isn't that, isn't that funny how that works that way? Yeah. And, and, and I bet you, if you didn't like what you saw, you wouldn't even go there. Oh, for sure. So yeah. I would, for some reason, I would take this online stranger who I don't know yeah. over the real in-person person that I do know. It's, it's strange how that works out. So I, I think you're really onto something on this validation. I think that's a, uh, I think that's a, that's a great point. Uh, is there, uh, and I know we could go on to the branding. We could do a three-day event on, on branding. Uh, anything stand out of, Hey, uh, you know, you go, go read the article, uh, which if you go, uh, to the, uh, Scotsman guide, uh, dot com, right. You'll see a link to the, uh, a link to the article. Um, is there, is there, is there anything that kind of stands out like, Hey, you want to make sure you're doing this. Is there anything that we haven't discussed? Well, we've kind of gone over a broad topic here. Is there anything that we've missed that, uh, that you think we need to, uh, to bring up or, or did we cover it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we covered the important parts. And, and again, I, you know, I, I've said the word uh, differentiate because um, I mm. think that's just critical um, in this competitive market. And, and then across industries, you know, what makes you different? It, the more you can kind of define that, um, you know, I, I think the better off you'll be. Yeah. I, I have to tell you in, on the article, uh, I uh, always love how they put the key points uh, to the side of the article. You know, make sure make sure you got this when you read the article. And uh, one of one of the key points that I really enjoyed was uh, discuss your experience, strengths, and knowledge on your website. And it's it it reminds me of an old book that I read. It, what was it called? Uh, how to toot your horn without blowing it. <laughs> and uh, you know, because I I do I think you know we have to we have to say hey I'm I'm pretty good at what I do because if you don't, you know, they don't know. So I I do think it's uh, important to you know to tell people what you're good at what you what you're you know what you do very well, and I don't think that's um you know I don't think there's I think there's everything right about doing that. So I really like that part. So uh, anything I should ask you today that I didn't, uh, Michael? Did we cover it? Oh yeah, I mean I can't think of anything in addition that you should ask me. 